So, in this uh, uh, session, I am going to uh, talk about uh, uh, the design and fabrication of customized implants in uh, oral and maxillofacial uh, surgeries. Uh, though the name, the title is oral and maxillofacial, um, I am going to discuss one craniofacial case, uh, but is uh, not exactly the implantation, but that is a design and analysis of a, a cranium implant for a patient with met an accident, a trauma case. Um, for that, uh, we have used a couple of softwares and uh, Fanindra is right now is here. So, after my presentation, so he is going to demo, give a demo on Rhinosaurus software uh, uh, for designing and uh, analyzing. Analysis, we have done ANSYS in ANSYS also. So, that is a uh, one craniofacial surgery I am going to discuss and rest will be the maxillofacial or dental. Uh, so, uh, uh, that is what the first case is uh, modeling and analysis of a, a, a cranial implant so that is in cranioplasty kind of a case. Um, as yesterday also I said the operating on a craniofacial uh, a bit challenging than a maxillofacial uh, surgery uh, or even orthopedic or a dental surgery. So, definitely uh, anything is cranial then your brain will be there immediate to your cran cranium bone. So, so that is there is a big challenge involved in cranioplasty. But at least what we have done is we have done modeling and analysis of that a cranium implant uh, for a patient where we can uh, uh, fix an implant. And, and one more challenging uh, job here at cranioplasty is uh, you know the there is a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid called CSF. The CF, CSF is a fluid. So, that fluid will uh, pump from the brain to the spine. So, if your cranium implant is not properly fixed and by chance there is a gap in the implant to the, uh, the, the skull bone. So, definitely there will be a chance of leakage of this fluid. So, that is another challenge um, uh, and anything your brain and uh, uh, crucial organ you are talking about. So, so uh, the first case I am going to uh, talk about the modeling and analysis of a cranial implant and second case actually. This was my first case um, with Narana Dental College. So, that is way back 10, 11 years back, 11 or even more than that, 12 years ago. Uh, that was the first uh, attempt. So, I was having a, a fast track project that is a young scientist from DST. Uh, then uh, we took some cases from the Northern Dental College and then we, if we, we, we have used this for planning the surgery, but nothing is done with the implantation. But basically, uh, they will be having a standard implant for the dental. Uh, there are some companies which they will sell a standard implant sizes. So, at least what we have done for the dental case is, so just uh, uh, using these the 3D printed models uh, for uh, planning and rehearsal the surgery, basically uh, as you know that uh, there will be a, a nerve which is passing from this uh, no, condyle portion and then it will come like this and in, from this again mental foramen it will come like this and again it will go 
from the other side of the condyle of the lower jaw called mandible. So, uh, the problem here is why a 3D printing is needed for a dentist or especially for an implantologist, so which is going to use uh, a, a fix an implant or fix and screw and then on top of it you have abutment and the, uh, the ceramic or the artificial tooth they are going to fix it. So, the basic problem here is um, how to get that nerve information. Nerve will be the inside the jaw, but it is not outside the jaw. If it is outside means normally what they do, you know, probably somebody might have experienced, they will take the impression from your mouth, right? So, they will take impression, they will use the impression technique uh, to, 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 to get the, uh, uh, the jaw uh, surface. Uh, but the challenge here is the nerve is inside the bone, uh, but if you take impression, you will get only the outer surface of the bone, but nerve is inside. So, there is no chance at all if a dentist is gone for a conventional impression technique, absolutely it is ruled out. Then why this nerve is so important? So, definitely, so uh, if, if he over deals and there will be a chance of cutting that nerve, right? And then say these models will help him. So, what will be the depth of the drill and what will be the size of the diameter of the drill and what will be the orientation, right? So, you have a different teeth, you have a molar teeth, wisdom teeth and you have other teeth, right? So, so, what will be the orientation that he has to uh, make a, a, a hole uh, and placing a, a implant a screw and then fixing the teeth. So, definitely none other than this technology will give a such a kind of solution. So, where and some of the 3D printers can print in transparent, more transparent materials like right? say you have a VAT photopolymerization system or a material jetting system. So, where we can have a resin which is more transparent in nature. So, we can see what is inside and what is outside, it is more transparent. So, then a surgeon definitely uh, he can very much see where is that nerve on, on the bone. So, then he can he can uh, rehearsal the surgery and he can come out with this is what the implant size, the length, diameter, orientation, so on and so forth. So, otherwise, he has to compromise with some standard size implant, but you have a chance, you have normally they, they use a titanium as a implant screw. So, then the 3D printers can print a titanium material, Ti64, of course, it is FDA approved for implantation. So, then directly, so you can uh, uh, fabricate by using a metal 3D printer and then that is exact fitment to the patient. Otherwise, the, he, he has to compromise with the standard sizes available. So, you are uh, giving a customized solution. So, that was the first experience with a dental surgeon uh, that is basically a planning and uh, know uh, com coming out with the conclusion what will be the size of the implant. So, not a conventional standard sizes are not taken here. It's, uh, so, that is the, uh, the we have used this technology for placement of the implant uh, for that uh, patient. And that is a dental case. Uh, just it's uh, it's a planning the surgery. Uh, basically, it is a, a, a diagnostic model plus planning the surgery uh, and rehearsal the surgery on the uh, patient specific uh, mandible. So there are the the, the he requires uh, two uh, two molar uh, teeth. Means he lost the two molar teeth, and then we need to you know uh, implant them. So uh, that was the experience with uh, a dental case. And then third case uh, is um, 
uh, mandibular uh, distraction osteogenesis. Uh, um, a couple of days ago, Dr. Chitra was mentioning. So, and you have a beautiful uh, developments in medicine. You, you, you have. Uh, it was not there earlier. So again, so it is a new uh, procedure. Uh, normally, they call this as a distraction osteogenesis. Uh, so they they can uh, know uh, forward the jaw or they can uh, know uh, backward the jaw, and then they have a, uh, a device called distractor. So they will fix that distractor. So that may be the external or that may be internal depends on the patient condition and where uh, we need to you know uh, reconstruct the bone uh, so then that depends uh, so then that device will be used to guide the growth of the bone so in this case uh, 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 this is the case um, uh, uh, a 8 year or a 9 year old girl so we operated uh, on that girl even that is given in the book also in the in in, in the uh, in the material proceedings i have given that case in the book also so that is the case uh, we attempted uh, in terms of uh, oral maxillofacial uh, cases that was the first case we attempted with the oral maxillofacial surgeon and then uh, once we have done that case so there there are a lot of cases in a queue like uh, there uh, uh, but i i kept only a few here uh, uh, six i pick one each from uh, one dental and one uh, uh, cranial of course it's not implanted but uh, though one of my phd scholar is working in that area and anyway he got awarded recently so uh, then we 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 uh, then we got another case uh, uh, amyloblastic fibroma of mandible or uh, this is the case uh, normally even you can come across uh, uh, consumption of tobacco products so there is a cancerous bone reconstruction is needed uh, 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 in this case so uh, that is the case for uh, um, that is uh, in this case also we tried to implant but unfortunately because of the regulations and other stuff this, this was the first attempt we made for implanting the uh, uh, thing in a uh, in this case but unfortunately we could not do it uh, and then next case but at least what we have done is we have given uh, the biomodel and then that was useful for fixing the plates otherwise normally they use a, a, a plates you know the steel plates so they will fix the plates and at least these uh, 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 3d printed models are helpful for doing a such a kind of uh, no planning and rehearsal the surgery how much portion that cancer is there how much portion we need to cut it so all that thing they have done uh, this we have done uh, three year three years ago but that is a, a bit of conventional and 3d printed one it's not 100 percent 3d printed uh, 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 surgical procedure uh, but uh, recently there is update uh, th th uh, they are asking to do a resurgery by using uh, why because we have successfully implanted in two other uh, or, or uh, three or four other uh, um, cases so then they are uh, but why because why i am trying to say here is uh, but conventional still there will be a, a failures or it may be uh, reworking the uh, reopening the site maybe oftenly the surgery must be done a second time uh, things like that so and then the fifth case so this is again a, T, uh, a tmj joint so that is called temporomandibular joint uh, ankylosis uh, dr chitra also um, presented one or a uh, couple of cases about tmj reconstruction so this was the first um, implantation done by our group our group means again this is one of the phd scholar his name is marmad achari so he, we worked with the doctors and even we filed a patent uh, towards this uh, uh, surgery and uh, surgical procedure uh, and uh, uh, in couple of uh, uh, aspects so and that, that was the fifth uh, surgery or the fifth case and the sixth one is uh, uh, normally you uh, if you have a bone 
and then you can implant it right if you don't have a bone where is the support <laughs> so bone is the support if you have a bone and then you can uh, fix the screw or uh, the metal implant but if bone is not at all there right and then now even the implants also nowadays you have due to the infection so the people are not preferring a screw screw type of uh, implants so you have some kind of a basal osseo integrated implant so this uh, 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 Santosh uh, has worked on this case actually. Uh, this is the accident case which he broke his or which he lost his bone with five teeth. Uh, I am talking about the maxilla that is upper portion of the jaw. And then we have a design fabricated a customized implant for that patient specific implant. That is the patient specific customized implant for fixing and 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 uh, giving a support and as well fixing the five teeth but at least we could accommodate four teeth <laughs> instead of five so again uh, the space or, or the uh, other constraints so we have done at least a four teeth and which we accommodated in that uh, which he lost the bone right so that portion so that was the sixth case i am going to talk but anyway uh, the 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 future of course uh, all these as I mentioned yesterday's uh, lecture also, these are a, a, a load bearing maximum what it can do right. So, it is either a, a maxillofacial uh, uh, cranium may be different, but maxillofacial and orthopedic cases which it may be uh, uh, and that too oral max facial you may be having a very less load, either it is a biting or a chewing force. So, then you, you, you are not going, going to eat a stones or right or any iron uh, balls, but you may not be uh, require a much loads which it may be uh, they, they the case in case of uh, orthopedic. So, anyway that is the, uh, the future direction as we know that it is uh, towards a tissue engineering or a bio printing or organ printing. So, that is the future direction even Professor Ayan also uh, given uh, a good talk uh, during the morning session uh, the tissue engineering kind of a stuff. So, I will conclude my presentation with the future directions of this uh, 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 3D printing uh, in, in medical application. Uh, so, uh, with uh, actually this is the first case uh, which we which uh, you know, we were uh, uh, trying to model uh, and analyze the uh, as we see that uh, uh, there is a patient uh, uh, a 16 year old patient uh, a male patient uh, which uh, uh, met with an accident or a trauma uh, case this is and where we can see if this deformity or whatever you call or trauma or disease or whatever it is. So, if that is a symmetric, so you, you, you if it is a symmetric means the, the uh, uh, which we can easily mirror it and then which we you have a, a software which we can easily do that. But uh, if you see this, this is not a symmetric which you have this deformity which is away from the midline, which is away from the midline. So, of course, which we need to do a bit of uh, 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 so other stuff also here. Why? Because uh, you have a gap here and we need to do some kind of a surface or cow fitting kind of a stuff that we have done it. We have done it uh, uh, partially in a rhinoceros and even we developed a couple of algorithms to, to have a different approaches. Uh, um, so, doing that uh, modeling and analysis part. So, in this case or in this particular paper which we published, so this is basically a modeling part and fabricating a, 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 a custom fit implant uh, for this portion which he got uh, know, broken. So, uh, this is basically a mimics uh, a screen which you know basically you have a three planes and uh, uh, yesterday Manmada Chari was also giving a demo on this uh, 3D uh, slicer. So, basically you have a three planes right. So, either it is a axial plane or a sagittal plane or a coronial plane. So, which we can have nowadays the data acquisition systems also very good developments in the data acquisition systems a CT or MRI scanners. So, you have a uh, Professor Krishnanand was also mentioning a sixth generation, which we are living in the sixth generation of CT scanners, which you have multiple CTs, multi sliced uh, 
and even it can reconstruct a 3D uh, model. So, you have a, such a capabilities of a, uh, a scanners nowadays available, but uh, anyway, uh, but still it requires uh, a, a medical image processing software, even though you have uh, a good uh, CT scanners, uh, but still we need to, uh, we need to segregate or we need to, you know, threshold them, we need to get a region of interest. And definitely in order to supplement your CT images from the CT which you took from the CT scanner, definitely there must be some software, so which it should accompany your images. So, in this case we have used a mimic software uh, and basically this is a, a skull portion, of course you know the Huntsfield uh, values that is uh, uh, the bone uh, you have and one more thing here the bone if you, 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 if you if you see this bone, so this bone this bone looks like uh, a solid bone right, is it a solid bone? No, definitely, so it is not a solid bone, so if you see at the outer uh, thing you have a, you have a cortile kind of a bone right which is harder on, on either side like you have one uh, as which is uh, you know adjacent to your uh, brain and you have outer uh, thing and again the thickness of the inner one and the thickness of the outer one is not same and within these two you have a kind of a trabecular kind of a bone structure which is having a porous which is a porous and the challenge here is and that too it is a varying thickness, it is not a uniform thickness, say if you have the outer, outer bone is say, say 0.5 mm and the inner bone is say 0.4 mm and, 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 and the trabecular bone is say it may be 3 mm, no it is not the case, so it is it may be varying across your uh, you know, entire skull, that is another challenge. Say if at all, if you want to fix an implant here, so the biggest challenge here, here is the varying thickness of the skull. The varying thickness of the skull is the biggest challenge. But what we, is, this is the first attempt which we have done in this area. So what we have done is at least we, we took the average bone thickness. So that was the uh, thing and that we have modeled it these things we have modeled it in a thematic software again from the materialize. So, these softwares are very costly uh, if you want to purchase a single user license also like uh, it is a very costly software. But uh, fortunately, I was having a DST a fast track young scientist project. So, I bought it from that project, but it is very costly software. You have a magic for doing a, a, a uh, initial segmentation, region growing and converting as a STL file and, and, and all the designing of the implant is done in a thematic again from the materialized Belgium. So, this is done in the, in the, in the, in the, in the thematic software and uh, uh, this is what uh, and we need to take the measurements which we can see uh, the measurements also, it is not a uniform and you have you know uh, all this stuff and then uh, finally, finally we could able to print them um, in, a, a, in a simple 3D printer. So, it is not going to implant, uh, we are not planning to implant it, just we want to uh, check that the whatever the implant we have designed for this portion, whether it is fitting properly or not, if at all, if there is a mismatch and of course, a, a, a bit of uh, hydroxy appetite uh, kind of a paste will be used during the uh, surgeon while doing the surgery. So, you may use some tinkering, but basically you have to have a, a tight fit implant uh, uh, and the other challenges as I already mentioned, it is uh, the, 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 the cerebrospinal fluid called CSF, CSF should not leak from the brain which is uh, passing from brain to the spine. So, then you have to take care of that, right. So, anyway, so then we have done a trial and error or of course, we have tried uh, with the different uh, thing with taking some average value of the thickness and then we have printed and, and we have published this, this just is not implanted, just is for the modeling and the analysis part of it. So, and then we checked for the, the fitment of the implant. So, then we, we, we gained some confidence 
saying that okay then uh, let us see for the uh, next case and then uh, in continuation with that so even we have developed um, a, a, a kind of uh, um, you see which we can see uh, again the same case uh, it is asymmetric defect so so these are trauma cases we does not know where the skull has broken and uh, we do not know right that is in our, not in our hands some accident so he may fall or so, so, so we do not know the, the, uh, you, you can come across a lot of asymmetric uh, defects or other deform, deformities of these uh, 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 skull bones. So of course uh, then we have uh, used uh, uh, this is done in a rhinosaurus right yeah uh, yeah he is going to give a demo on these how to model kind of a stuff. Uh, and we have we have developed uh, a couple of algorithms uh, uh, even to 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 get uh, you know get it filled by this uh, uh, guy here so you don't have a bone here right so anyway uh, you have a very good cad uh, modeling techniques you have a, a nerves based uh, uh, know, um, curve fitting so which we have used a nerves nerves based curve fitting to 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 get this uh, basically it's a reverse engineering approach so we will go line by line and then wherever you have then we need to uh, do uh, that kind of uh, uh, you know cow fitting uh, and then and then uh, next part is ok fine and then we have done it and then next part is that uh, you, you, we, we have concluded one implant design from the earlier uh, study which I was uh, discussing in the previous slide. So the, 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 the same thing which we are going to fix it uh, and for uh, checking for that uh, no fluid uh, pressure whether it is uniform or it, it, it should not non-uniform or it should not create any problem right. So, so for that matter the fixation points are very important and then you have some thumb rules or you have some regulations also uh, if, you, if you if you ask the craniofacial surgeon so uh, earlier may be different but now now you have uh, you have a, a minimum number of fixation points are needed so then we we first simulated and we have done analysis uh, again in ansi software yeah we have we have done it in ansi software for uh, you now fixation of these first we tried with eight eight points but it is not uh, at the uh, no uniform and then we tried with 10 so like that so we we have analyzed or uh, uh, the fixing the uh, these uh, fixation points at the optimum locations and the optimum number so that is what we have done and then if at all if you want to go with the implant then what will be the best material and of course you have a fda approved um, uh, materials like you have a titanium and you have a pmma it's a, it's, a, it's a polymer and of course you have a peak but i got a doubt whether the peak is 100% it got fda approved but but people are but people are implanting but i got a doubt <laughs> but anyway so you 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 may be having a three options but it looks some funny how do you compare with the metal with the polymer yes yes you are correct but the thing is uh, and again uh, metal may be heavy and if at all if you make a lattice structure or, or, or a kind of a gyroid structure but still it is a heavy um, uh, uh, of course uh, being a metal and even a polymer may be the better choice as far as uh, uh, the deformation and the equivalent stress is concerned and then we uh, realize that maybe if at all if you want to go with the implantation so it may be the peak may be the uh, best solution we thought and we have published in this uh, in uh, in some other journals and then we have even come out with a, a meshless approach uh, you know for uh, even we, we we tried this meshless approach uh, for the uh, asymmetric as well as the symmetric a kind of a deformities so we checked our algorithm with the uh, with one symmetric and one asymmetric uh, kind of uh, uh, deformities and uh, and as i already mentioned say you have um, the the outer bone uh, you have a this is a cotyl bone on the either side and you have a spongy bone or, or a trabecular bone inside right so none other than 3d printing will give will allow you to print in a single go right you 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 have a solid or again it is not a solid exactly right so it will it will allow you to 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 print 
uh, 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 some portion may be uh, a bit of solid and some portion may be porous and again the porosity may be varying again so as you know that it may be uh, due to sex uh, and uh, age and other stuff so maybe you you, you uh, and uh, 3d printing is only the solution to print this kind of a thing in a single go in, in a single attempt and not in intermediate time talking about in a single attempt so then uh, we have done these uh, modeling analysis of these uh, implants and then we we have tried with uh, different uh, uh, lattice structures somebody is asking so then we didn't try as a gyroid right so we we tried with some uh, unit cell approach we have we have used a unit cell approach so uh, yeah so unit cell approach we have tried uh, yeah so then uh, we we have done this uh, uh, um, analysis modeling analysis and now you can see how this you know the the the, the C, csf uh, distribution now it is at the center so then then we we concluded that so this may be the best uh, kind of a thing and we published in in in, in, in the, the bottom journal so uh, this is experience uh, uh, with the and anyway the funny is here so if you if you need further discussions you can talk with the funny uh, I, I think I got earlier some questions from asking you about this and then you can you can interact with him and anyway he is going to give a demo on uh, uh, the rhinosaurus which we have done and if possible answers if time permits so yeah this this, this is the thing we, we have done in the in the area of a uh, cranio uh, facial uh, area uh, and then then I will move on to the a dental application or a dental implantation so as i mentioned this was the first case almost 12 11 12 years uh, ago when i joined here uh, during that time 2006 7 yeah so then uh, as i already mentioned uh, there is a inferior alveolar nerve so which is pa passing starting from this condyle and then here and mental foramen and then it will go out and the uh, uh, and the main issue is as you uh, as we uh, uh, understood that so they the 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 dentist wants to make a drill here and then he wants to fix an implant here right and he should not over drill and in, in in such a way that he may damage the nerve right and then you you must have exact orientation size length things like that so then uh, this is the case which we took uh, uh, yeah he is a bds student <laughs> first year bds student from narayana dental college is a 19 year uh, boy so the, then we uh, which he, he he needed two uh, teeth which we can see here uh, these are the mr te uh, teeth at the uh, tooth at uh, the uh, the molar places and then start with some mimic software and then uh, it need not be mimics now you have all open source software so, so which it can be done very easily so it's not much difficulty maybe at that time it, it was difficulty 12 13 years back but now it's not a difficulty you can you can get a lot of uh, not only single 3d slicer you have a lot of open source softwares almost do the same capability almost so then this is the uh, thing which we need to import a dicom image uh, um, uh, and then dot uh, mcs that is the proprietary uh, file for the uh, the mimic software and then thresholding <coughs> you have the tools uh, 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 yesterday also i explained i i, I, I have listed those uh, tools or or the features or the tools which you can use the thresholding you now uh, eliminate residual pixels and finally uh, you, you convert a STL file and then which your area of interest is only the lower uh, jaw that is the mandibular uh, mandible so then mandible will be uh, segmented or it got separated uh, uh, from the data uh, which uh, data sets collected from the CT uh, in DACOM image and then uh, this we have printed in uh, uh, dimension FDM machine so uh, uh, but the, it could be better if you print it in SLA machine of course <laughs> so it may be more transparent than this is ABS so it is not a transparent material and uh, now they got some transparent options also with the statuses uh, but this we have done 13 years back uh, 
yeah and sla machines are very costly at that time now it is if you if you buy if you want to buy sla machine from form 2 so it may be costing around 3 lakhs altogether it may be around 3 lakhs so then you can get a sla machine so uh, this we have used uh, uh, fdm machine to print this and uh, and, and and go and sit with the uh, dentist uh, or the implantologist so where he is going to place then he let let, let him uh, drill uh, those uh, use that the dental drills on this let him <coughs> do all that uh, kind of uh, a mock surgery whatever you call uh, then do uh, let him do the mock surgery on these uh, models of course uh, and then let him uh, let him uh, know directly go to the operation theater and 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 they can uh, uh, know a drill and they can fix that uh, implant and further abutment and uh, and then the teeth uh, and things like that and this is the post operative the immediately they have a small x-ray machine right so then they'll take the x-ray uh, immediately that as as and when they fix that implant so this is the the positioning or the placement of the implant which they but we have used this uh, uh, we we bought we didn't print this we don't uh, even we don't have a metal 3d printer as of now maybe uh, maybe 3 4 months you are going to get it and if you are having a 3d metal 3d printer of course you can even um, make your customized titanium uh, in medical grade titanium 64 screw you can you can print it and you can fix it fix him up right so th this is what uh, we have done for a, a, a dental case at Narana Dental College and this girl is an 8 year old girl and and which we can see um, uh, there is a problem here which uh, uh, right from the birth like say th there is a abnormality here and as you uh, know that uh, the, the opening of the mouth uh, should be around 4 centimeters that, that is the normal opening of the mouth of a, a, of a healthy a healthy person so it sh you, you must open a 4 centimeter opening of the mouth so that is the thing which we can see uh, this deformity uh, and and uh, so what we need to do is we need to uh, make it symmetric means we need to operate as a distractive osteogenesis right so this is a distraction osteogenesis is the procedure so you can uh, you can forward uh, the jaw right or you can backward the jaw so uh, so uh, uh, and then in that context so you can print the jaw lower jaw and give it to the surgeon so they can uh, they can do those calculations uh, why because uh, there will be a screw uh, and there will be a screw and uh, the patient has to or uh, she has to rotate it so what uh, that depends on the growth of the bo bone growth and of course again it will vary from the uh, age and the sex the the growth of the bone so based on these models so th this is a deformity which we can uh, see in the uh, 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 and this is the x-ray um, which we can see it requires uh, a, a, a bit of stuff which we need to do it and this is the, uh, uh, the, the, the and then we uh, of course we need to start with the mimics or any medical image processing software in fact so then we we, we have to import and then we 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 are reconstructed uh, and we can now see uh, this and, and this is what I am talking about there is a, a device called a distractor so they will keep this distractor um, inside the mouth or it may be external or it may be internal so there is a screw here which you can notice here there will be a screw here and the based on the growth of the bone and the, which you the, the condition of the patient so typically it may be a one revolution per day or uh, in this case or it may be varying a bit uh, here and there so again that depends on the growth and the, the the site or the kind of how much movement we need to forward the jaw the so things like that so and uh, then we printed in the mozo machine this is a statasis mozo machine which we printed this model in this case and this is a model which we can see uh, here also the uh, the abnormality which we need to uh, do a kind of a uh, 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 moving the jaw and which we need to twisted it out or uh, in order to yeah which we this view will tell you so it should be you uh, know uh, um, if it is a perfect it should be a semicircle so then which we can see uh, which we need to uh, do a reconstruction rather than which we need to uh, make it a symmetric one 
and which we can see here also this is the ramus height uh, on one side and which we can see this is the ramus uh, a, a shorter ramus height right so which we need to strengthen it uh, this in such a way that uh, so we can get a symmetry we can attain a, 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 a near symmetric and then which we need to uh, of course uh, uh, this is the difference between the ramus height uh, we need to uh, twist it uh, this jaw and uh, yeah which we can see this is the initial uh, condition of the patient and slowly uh, this is the thing and uh, this is uh, but still there is a um, actually uh, that is what uh, uh, the, the bone growth is there up to the uh, the, the, the teenage uh, the, the growth will be more. Uh, so then so it should be done as some kind of uh, um, further correction or some kind of uh, uh, tinkering or whatever you call that the once she turns into uh, no. Uh, so, uh, 19 or 20 years old. Now, now she is. Uh, this is two or two and a half years back, or three years ago, which we operated, and 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 exactly now this is a condition. Okay, a bit uh, a, a reasonable uh, deformation or the transformation from the initial to the final. So, this is what we have done. Um, the and the third case, as I mentioned. So, this case is. Uh, um, uh, uh, which there is a, a, a kind of uh, you know uh, which we can see which we can see there is uh, because of consuming the tobacco products and which there is a, some kind of a cancerous bone kind of thing here which it is going sorry this portion this portion which we can see probably may be keeping that tobacco thing kind of a stuff here. So, then uh, of course, uh, the 3D printing so just you can print it right and then uh, you can sit with the uh, a surgeon and how much portion we need to cut it. So, anyway, it is a cancerous uh, bone which we need to cut it. So, how much portion we need to cut it. So, then exactly those kind of a stuff which you can do it on this, at least you can do a kind of cutting business on this model. So, uh, and then if you cut it and in order to maintain the symmetricity, right. So, then you have luckily it is a symmetric uh, uh, deformity or a defect. So, you can use. Uh, you know mirroring technique and then in order to attain your uh, geometry shape and dimensions things like that. So, you can you can you can mirror it right from taking other uh, stuff and then uh, which we need to uh, implant. So, this implant uh, anyway you are you are removing that portion. So, we need to fix an implant right. So, for fixing an implant uh, so actually we tried the diff different designs, but um, it need not be the optimum design which we have designed, but uh, at least the idea idea here is okay. Uh, the of course the idea will be the it should be a minimum weight, right? It should it should not be you know again uh, which we need to uh, work on that uh, stuff. So we have designed uh, uh, a, 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 a couple of uh, designs or uh, three designs. So and then. And we printed, so this we, we need to acknowledge here. Uh, Ian Gibson, uh, we have printed at uh, Deakin University. These we we send the uh, we send this uh, designs uh, uh, to uh, uh, Gibson, and he printed at Deakin University. And then we worked out, and at the end of the day, so uh, I we came to know that it should it should not directly implanted. So there will be a lot of regulations, of course. So then then we ended up keeping this as a model but not as an implant but our aim is to you know implant it but unfortunately and then we have come out with some kind of a porous kind of a designs instead of making it as a solid that is the that is the beauty of uh, 3d printing which we can you know make it as a porous like almost you can mimic the bone um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the 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 trabecular bone structure inside so you 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 can have some lattice structure or like uh, the people are working in that area a lot of research is going on so at least what we can do is so that's what we have done but unfortunately so we could not implant it uh, because of these uh, reasons so but at least what it has helped them is to 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 used as a model for uh, you know fixing the plates for fixing the plates on 
uh, these models and at least uh, it is a bit of uh, planning, but it is not implant uh, implantation we, 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 we were failed rather than so to, to implant in this case and at least to some extent it got helpful for uh, using that as you know uh, for uh, planning the surgery or uh, the, the rehearsal the surgery on those uh, mock surgeries. So then uh, this is the uh, deserted uh, uh, stuff from uh, uh, the, uh, the lower jaw with the teeth and this, these are the plates they will bend it and, and normally uh, even for this uh, uh, they may take uh, a bone right. So God has given one spare bone for us so, so normally you, you have this uh, knee joint to the ankle joint so there will be there will be a two bones can you name those bones yeah. tibia one is a tibia that is the one where the the load bearing uh, a bone which it will take all the load and there is one more spare god has given for us that is what is that biomedical students fibula okay so wonderful so fibula fibula is the one which you have a spare so normally they may use that bone for grafting bone grafting kind of uh, uh, say so people may say that they have taken a tie bone right so it is exactly uh, so where we can use this uh, a bone uh, for uh, for uh, such a kind of situations where we need to have some kind of uh, uh, replacement uh, probably uh, they, they have used that uh, but the thing here is um, uh, sorry and, and the thing here is recently we, we, we have uh, they have approached to, 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 to uh, is there any possibility of fixing the implant why because it may have some complications after the uh, surgery they, they, they performed and for the betterment if there is a chance of uh, using the implant that is a requirement they got from, uh, from them. So and then this is the next case. Um, uh, uh, this we, we we take it as very challenging case. Um, uh, why? Because uh, she is 20 year old. Uh, yeah, uh, and then problem here is uh, which we can notice her. Uh, uh, there will be uh, uh, two problems here. Uh, her uh, 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 TMJ, so that is uh, temporomandibular joint uh, here, uh, which it will join your. Uh, uh, the maxilla and the mandible right so the skull bone and your mandi mandible so there is a tmj joint right it got fused so that is another issue and then of course uh, we need to correct we need to forward this uh, a lower raja of course and then uh, so she got uh, uh, one side fusing right carry it's one side it got fused it is not both sides but at least some extent so it's, it got a one side uh, 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 fused so then which what we need to do is we need to release that fusing of that uh, TMJ joint and then anyway we are going to cut that portion so then freshly we need to uh, design and fabricate that joint so then luckily she had the other part of it uh, so then uh, we could uh, able to you know mirror the same uh, way we, 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 we could take the dimensions uh, and the form and the and the, and the geometry uh, from the other side uh, of the TMJ and we could uh, uh, we, we have done that actually. So which we can see uh, there is a fusion of this bone here so that is a problem um, otherwise it should be you know, free. So if you see those will be detachable <laughs> it is not like this so it sh it should then only you can you know, have this kind of a movement or uh, the opening of the mouth so will be done our normal opening is a 4 centimeter right so once the, your your joint is perfect so then you could able to you know articulate or you could able to, uh, able to open the 4 centimeter opening of the mouth but anyway here so she got a one side problem that is a T TMJ got fused uh, uh, so then we need to uh, yeah, so that is the image and this is the 3D printed model which you can very much educate or communicate, see, see it got fused but it should not be like this right. So you have that condyle and that condyle will be just touch and go or even 
it's 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 separate it's not it's not a single part like this right so so uh, this is the problem um, and one more thing which we can notice here also uh, th th this should be forwarded yes or no this, 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 this should be forwarded it's not it should not keep as it is so means at she requires two surgeries so which we cannot do like say two two surgeries which we cannot do uh, in a single time so there will be a chance of uh, no so anyway so what they have done first is so they have done the forwarding of this uh, mandible jaw so which we can uh, know have a first as uh, some kind of a, a forward movement and then uh, yeah, yeah so that's what they have done so uh, and this is the one where i'm talking about say so they will cut uh, they will cut the bone and they will leave um, and the bone will start growing again depends on the age sex and other stuff uh, and then this uh, yeah, this is what it's going to be yeah, exactly so which they can very much plan on this what could be the stretching or the the the, the, the forward or the backward movement of the jaw so uh, this is what they can do all that stuff here right so then in such a way that now you can see so so this is the previous this is the before the surgery where we can see uh, it should require forward movement right how much it should forward this much forward how it should be done with a distractor right so fine and then so uh, this is not 21 mm okay so it is 21 mm but say say uh, uh, the uh, we should not uh, you know bluff the people so even it can be you know any community or uh, say you no know, I, I recently i came across probably you may came across uh, there is a one case in hyderabad there is a one student a btech student right so 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 he may be very short uh, maybe four four and a half feet four, four and a half feet probably so then the doctors were said that so you will we will make you six feet <laughs> so we will make you six feet global huh? yeah, and no, i don't know but it has happened in a hyderabad i'm sure that so so then it, it should not get you know so at least so okay bone okay in this case it may be 21 or it may be say it is one inch or it may be two inch or it may be three inch but it's not a two feet or, <laughs> or three feet right so how it's possible say you know, it's it's not possible but uh, no uh, i don't want to criticize anybody they say here uh, yeah is it maybe that depends that is a humor it may be for possible okay 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 so it's possible to grow uh, two feet or three feet that is humor or any any bone they, they okay mm -hmm. correct okay Ah, uh, that was failed. <laughs> okay, 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 wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, what is the maximum you 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 have? Uh, okay. Okay. Twenty-one centimeter. Twenty-one centimeter. One limb. Okay. Yes. Yes. 10 times 10 10 times okay 
So, that is a fumar bone you are talking about tibia, it is tibia, yeah tibia yeah, ok, ok. Mm -hmm. So, you, you want to make it the same size of the other one that is yeah, yeah relatively it will be equal, equal yeah. Mm, walk, you will walk, living, yeah, that can be. <laughs> okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It's once it got hyped in a media, so probably, so it may go to the other way around. Correct. <laughs> Okay, okay, wonderful. Okay, yeah, um, uh, and uh, yeah, this is the thing where you know they can uh, 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 do a kind of uh, uh, practice on these, like say, uh, say like this, say one mm, one mm, one revolution, maybe uh, typically uh, for this case also, right, Chari? Okay, okay. So, and this is the uh, during the surgery where you can see, so they can they have uh, cut uh, opened and then this is the distractor they kept it here, uh, uh, which we can see this is the distractor and this is a bone uh, uh, and this is the uh, thing which it should be right. So, this is, so th this, this is the, uh, so we, we have uh, done these, uh, we, we have you know uh, started with all these stages what are the errors and how to minimize those errors means in such a way that we can improve the accuracy or even at least which we thought that uh, but anyway it need not have uh, need not require uh, uh, we realized afterwards that it did not require much uh, accuracy or tolerance which you are looking at in a manufacturing area right. So, of course, the surgeons may not be uh, looking uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for, for for a micron level accuracies right. So, anyway. So, the, the, this is the one, uh, yeah, this is the uh, before the surgery and the after, after the surgery once uh, uh, this uh, has forwarded and now which, which we can see this is the thing. And next thing is which we need to do, uh, this is the TMJ where we need to, you know, it got fused, uh, uh, we need to release that uh, uh, fusing of that joint and then we need to design the same, so you have a mirroring technique. Uh, uh, fortunately, you, she got only one side fusion, right? So then it got, uh, then uh, you, the, you, you have this uh, geometric bone, or this is arch, that geometric arch, and you have a condyle that is the lower uh, uh, mandible, that portion, the, the tip portion which you have the condyle, and there is a fusa or is a disc, which uh, no, uh, there is a disc, yeah, yeah, that is the thing which we need to, so here and, and of course there may be some nose kind of a stuff here, uh, if you see the anatomy uh, uh, of this TMJ and, and at that uh, portion. So, this is the uh, one what uh, uh, we, 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 we got a soft copy of the patient like say where you have a CT uh, images of the patient and then we are uh, doing it, reconstructing it as a 3D um, and then which we can. Uh, uh, this is during the growth uh, that is what which you may get doubt why this is uh, nasty <laughs> right. So, yes this is uh, no uh, we uh, uh, just uh, previous surgery uh, that is uh, distraction osteogenesis so, so right. So, then um, and then next surgery is this one. So, uh, then we need to uh, you know uh, relieve this uh, uh, TMJ fusion. So, which you can see other way other side though it is it is ok, but which we need to uh, uh, release here on the uh, right side. Okay, and left side it may be okay, well, which we can see it should be like this, but it should not be like this. So uh, that this is abnormality which we need, we need to do it. So means at the moment you cut it, and of course you will damage this joint. <laughs> you will damage this joint, and then we need to mimic or we need to uh, uh, no uh, uh, capture or uh, get this condyle fusa and uh, fusa and then this uh, uh, geometric arch portion, uh, the bone which uh, no so. Yeah, and then uh, we, we, we we are comfortable that we can uh, do mirroring, and then we can capture the same dimension, geometry, and uh, other side we can as it is we can no, uh, 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 copy it, and then uh, th 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 this is the design, and this is uh, first we have seen in uh, uh, 
uh, how it looking uh, and how it comes uh, and then we printed in a PLA as a small 3D printer. Uh, this is not going to implant like say which we are going to further uh, building it in a titanium material. So, uh, this is the one and and of course, you have this fusa like disc. So, this is the disc portion where uh, this condyle will go and uh, sit your uh, uh, the, the, the skull bone or the, or the, or the maxilla or the skull bone from that. So, this is the fusa component and again this is also captured from luckily you got other one is fine and then it got uh, uh, captured other side uh, which we can see this is the thing and then we printed in um, uh, this is a PC, but it is a medical grade PC which is certified by uh, the vendors or the FDA or so then then, then we, we should not uh, give you uh, know the metal to metal uh, in order to avoid a metal to metal. So, so if, if this is also metal, so you have a condyle as a metal and you have a geometric arch as a metal, but you if you have again is a metal, so you have a friction and 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 I have seen in the literature the previous uh, earlier surgeries are done in the metal to metal contact, but nowadays nowadays nobody is doing this, but if you see the previous uh, uh, scenario maybe 30, 35 years back maybe, maybe nowadays nobody, they, everybody wants to avoid the metal to metal as you know that as a mechanical engineer we know that there, there will be a friction and then there will be a you know a lot of uh, this one, so uncomfortable or, so then. Um, uh, yeah, this is what so which we need to uh, this is a fused joint TMJ joint uh, in, a, in, a, in a we printed at that portion and this is the one which we need to and this is the geometric arch. So, which uh, each going to supplement here and I am talking about this is a condyle portion here right uh, yeah and then that FUSA component. So, uh, th th this is the one uh, uh, design and then further just we have we want to see how it is coming is the PLA just for uh, you know uh, check the uh, uh, the visibility of the uh, uh, joint or yeah. So, this is the one um, uh, this is going to be uh, uh, an, an implant uh, with, the, with the skull or the, or the maxilla area this is the bone and this is the fusa I am talking about and this is the condyle portion. So, this is what and if you if you put all together, so it may be like this and we need to fix on this bone and we need to give some um, provision for the fitting of the screws right. So, we need to fix that to the bone that implant should be fixed to the bone and these are the uh, provision for fixing the uh, things and this is the one where we printed on a US machine uh, yeah. Uh, and then and then uh, doing uh, we, we can expect this kind of surface finish, but not <laughs> this is it looks like uh, nasty of course and uh, say uh, as you know that it should be no more uh, the where the load may fall here on this condyle uh, portion and it got a bit of uh, no uh, post processed one. Yes, yes we, 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 we made it as a mirror finish surface by following. Uh, uh, the regulations or whatever it is. So, this and this uh, and uh, this is the geometric arch and this is the condyle portion and this is the fusa component and it got fused uh, we, we made it use some technique to fuse this and this is the thing and then this is the one and then finally this, this will be like this. So, then it will be yeah it should be it should be it should be you know then we printed after uh, uh, that cutting the thing and then this is uh, uh, an FDM machine we make this and this is a EOS machine met titanium and this is a PC again it is a status machine uh, some uh, medical grade PC. So, uh, th so this is the uh, uh, assembly it is going to be and yes and then of course, uh, we need to have some guide to 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 uh, to support otherwise you should not know you must have some support right. So, the surgeon or the he has to make a drill on the bone and he has to fix that screws right. So, then for that so we need to have some template should be designed and then that will be used around uh, uh, yeah during the surgery. So, this, this is what uh, and this is the thing yeah, yeah ok. So, the, this is the one uh, where we can see and anyway the Gibson also showed 
the other image but anyway so this is the uh, this is the one where um, uh, which we can see it got once that uh, the the uh, the fused jar it cut open so now which we can see there is a 4 centimeter opening of the mouth uh, and okay ah, and this is what uh, it got fixed by using that template so the screwing has done right yeah and this is what on the on the geometric side and this is the condyle uh, stuff on the bone it got fixed and she is the patient now she is okay no problems there is a video welcome Whoa. oh something has happened So now um, she could able to open the mouth, normal opening, normal chewing, normal biting. Yeah, yeah. So she she could she, she could able to do so the uh, uh, she could able to do the rotation kind of stuff. So now she is fine, absolutely no issue, no uh, problems at all. So the Manmadachari is here, like huh? Yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. Now, uh, her marriage got settled. Yeah, see, so now at least what um, uh, we, 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 we took uh, uh, a kind of a challenge. Why? Because um, definitely uh, if surgery fa uh, fails, but okay, fails means already she, she has been like that for the 20 years. Uh, so, at least if you uh, will make an attempt, if it clicks, okay, it is a new life for her, the, 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 the societal life has improved, right. So, at least that, that, that attempt make, made us to make success and we, 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 we are um, say, yeah, I, I think we have succeeded, okay. Now, no complications, yes. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, probably uh, yeah. The 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 titanium parts are costly. Uh, how much it cost, Yari? Thirty-five thousand. Yeah. So it is totally. But uh, maybe some project uh, <laughs> we could able to manage. But the thing is, still uh, the, the 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 titanium is the culprit. So actually, the problem here is uh, that is the exploitation of these guys nothing else say uh, you 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 have a titanium uh, what is the cost of a titanium but of course if you compare the stainless steel and titanium it may be around 4 to 5 times costlier in, in, in a in, in a raw uh, form but how it will become uh, how it will become say maybe 40 times or 50 times if you make it as a powder i don't know It's okay, but you have atomizers. So you, why why they want to exploit? So you have atomizer technology. So it, it should not cost that much uh, heavily, right? How? Yes. Right. Okay. It's okay. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you are correct. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, maybe yeah, that is the another uh, 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 why because I have been using this technology, 3D printing technology. Maybe I may be the person almost like uh, 2001, 2002 onwards. I have been using this technology, but the most pathetic thing is is cost of a consumable, a cost of a cost of the consumable. So I don't know. Maybe they want to get the profit out of the consumable. I don't know, but it's it's very costly. But but because of the patent expiration, 
some extent for polymers especially ABS, PLA and things like that it is very cheaper but still like metal powders and metal uh, things so definitely it, you, you cannot afford. So if you, you, if you buy a machine anyway I am, I am going to buy a metal machine so let me see like what is my experience with the metal machine. But of course the same experience which we have a polymer uh, uh, statasis machines long back which we have, you, we have been using it. But right now you have a, a rep rep kind of um, uh, revolution uh, then patent expiration. So things are down monopoly has gone right and very soon we are going to expect the metal will be the same case maybe, maybe down the line so definitely it is going to happen maybe down the line 10, 15 years. Oh, thank you for your feedback. Hexagonal screw you want to? Okay, not like this. Uh, spherical one. It's, it should be hexagonal. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks for your feedback. Yeah, definitely. So that may be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chari, can you say something? How uh, how you how we got fused? This one that is your doubt or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 this interface you are talking yes, about? Yes. You will be doing it, right, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we cannot expect much load. Ah, but like ah, this ah, is uh, at this portion, biting, yeah, uh, chewing force. But I. Anyhow, here the goodness is it is going under compression load itself. Ah, so, you are correct. So correct. 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 Compression again, it is only compression only. Again, it is a compression hip also. Okay, wonderful. UTM, UTM. But tension need not, why, why? you are not going to get any tension. Na? Compression is a major, it is a compression. Uh, uh, opening, while opening it may be. Yeah, while opening yeah, definitely it may be, uh, yeah, yeah. But major bite will be, bite will be with the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and then I am, I am coming for, uh, uh, now the last. Uh, case study that is uh, uh, this is a, uh, the the this is an accident case where uh, we can see so he lost uh, the bone uh, with the five teeth so that is the thing and then nerve relieving option should be done and, and, the, and the density of the bone is not uniform as you know that and angle of the teeth placement so these are the fewer uh, um, uh, uh, complications with this case so if you have some bone you can fix the uh, implants so <laughs> so yeah no bone so uh, then definitely it requires some kind of a customized implant should be designed and it should be fixed on top of it it should be no uh, no fix the uh, uh, the teeth so then we come out and then this is not again asymmetric <laughs> uh, yeah symmetric why because the the in such a way that he, he met an accident so that uh, uh, that fracture is not a symmetric fracture, so which even we can notice the length of this uh, 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 abutment and other abutment, it is not same, a slight uh, difference is there, it is not uh, the same. So, so and then we tested it for FEM like say whether it will withstand uh, maybe the, the chewing force, biting force and whatever maybe the forces that you no know, uh, he is going to take. So then we, we have done some kind of Van Mises uh, uh, 
analysis, stress analysis and this is what it is going to be. If we have that uh, the CT data of a patient uh, uh, and then this is a designed um, uh, implant and then we, we check for the placement uh, and uh, the, the things like that which, which you can see uh, it is not uh, symmetric even you, which we can even see. So, uh, it's it's accident. <laughs> we don't know how we can expect it's a symmetric accident, a symmetric uh, uh, fracture. So, and then before uh, going it uh, into the metal uh, implant, so then we have uh, done first with the uh, a PLA uh, uh, part, uh, both as uh, this uh, 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 bone and the implant. Uh, so yeah, and this is the size, and this is what so. <coughs> So, it will be there inside the implant and top of it. So, we could accommodate the four teeth uh, instead five actually. Uh, and this is the one, uh, the metal uh, one which uh, it got printed with. These are the supports actually, this is uh, during the build uh, on the substrate which we can see the, the, this, these are the supports and this, this is the thing. And afterwards, a bit of uh, uh, post processing or polishing. And this is the uh, this is the one where we can see the, this got uh, fixed here the bone the sorry the implant first it got fixed uh, uh, and uh, uh, which we can see the, this is a, another view where uh, you can uh, uh, even I was I was there uh, in the operation theater during this surgery uh, and and this is after the surgery and where we can see this is the placement of the um, implant, uh, which we can see, the, the, this, is, this is the placement of the implant, uh, yeah. and then on top of uh, this, this, these are the one, two, three, four, and these are the four teeth. It got fixed, um, and even you may be having a several cases like it may be a tumor uh, like this, or it may be a cleft cases, uh, uh, and this is an accident case, an emergency case, and of course the problem here is if it is emergency case. So then doctor may ask say, hey, you, can you make this <laughs> this entire skull within half an hour or one hour? Why? Because it is uh, the emergency case, right? So definitely it may not be possible uh, to take up all the cases may, like some emergency cases. So uh, why? Because if you want to make this skull on FTM machine, it will take minimum one day to, to, to print or at least that portion if you print it may be minimum half a day or not, not, not only half a day indefinitely it may be around uh, uh, 16 18 hours maybe to print and to clean and, and to uh, you know um, uh, give it to the surgeons definitely one one and a half day minimum it requires maybe like carbon 3d so they are claiming this cliff <laughs> cliff technology they are claiming it is 100 percent 100 times faster than the FDM conventional FDM machine it may be possible with the carbon uh, 3D that is a cliff by cliff technology or DLP tech DLP is also not that much fast but the cliff but at the cost of oxygen you have to you have to supply continuously the oxygen it may it may become very costly rather than FDM is very cheap so it, should, it, it may become uh, very costly if you go in that line, but it may be faster. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, I, I am coming, of course, uh, the uh, I already mentioned that. So, there are some blotters got printed. Yes, this is a blotter, and this is a blotter uh, which uh, uh, they have taken a piece of blotter from the patient and then then they have uh, a cultivator or they put it in an uh, incubator and adding the nutritions and things like that and then they have put back or uh, they have implanted this blotter uh, or uh, still some of the uh, organs. So, what I am trying to say here is uh, what do you mean by an organ printing or a bioprinting? So, what they will do is they will extract a cell from your own uh, body there won't be any chance of rejection right so that is your own cell or that is your own tissue or uh, whatever it is that has taken from you the living cell so then there won't be any rejection problem and then they will keeping it in a kind of a, um, uh, uh, a, a incubator or adding the nutrition to that and then generate and then uh, uh, testing it by using a bioreactors 
right and uh, exercising them if it is a, a nerve or a kind of a stuff so and then finally they may uh, implant or they may do repair of your organs so that is what uh, the organ printing or a bio printing is all about so uh, maybe uh, i will play a video if it works let me see uh, wow. When I was 10, I got really sick and they were trying to figure out what was going on and I was in and out of the hospital every week and they finally figured out that I was actually in kidney failure. A faulty bladder was Luke's problem, caused by the spina bifida. The bladder was sending fluid back up into my kidneys, which was making them not work correctly. But Luke was given a remarkable treatment. At Wake Forest School of Medicine, in America's North Carolina, researchers are growing artificial body parts. Luke was one of the first in the world to benefit. They take a piece of your bladder out, they grow it in a lab for two months into a new bladder that's your own and they, and they put it back in. Grow your own organs in the lab means no rejection problems and no waiting around for organ donors. It's called regenerative medicine and it's an exciting future that awaits us all. I see us getting to a point of having options available that actually stop disease processes, reverse disease processes, or offer people cures. Simple organs, like bladders, are the easiest to grow. Cells were taken from Luke's original bladder, multiplied up, nutrients added, and that produced this pink solution. And we then created a three-dimensional mold, and we place the cells on top of the mold. The mold is in the shape of a bladder and is made from material that breaks down in the body. We place the mold with the cells in an oven-like device. We cooked it, if you will, very much like baking a layer cake. And we then were able to take that organ out and we were able to place it into patients. And the team has cooked up more than bladders. Another of the organs that we have targeted is the urethra, which is the channel that connects the bladder to the outside of the body. It is a very important organ, as you can imagine. Some of Anthony's patients had had car accidents, damaging their urethras. So he decided to grow them new ones. They were like bladders, really, with a different geometry. Scaffolding was seeded with the patient's cells and nutrients, and then sewn into the shape of a urethra. And we then were able to place those engineered urethras back into those patients. To automate organ making, the researchers came up with an incredible method. Print them. I even started out with modified computer printers. But instead of using ink, we use cells. And we print the cells with a gel-like material, one layer at a time. And we then allow the gel to get harder over time. Nowadays, these bio-printers are purpose-built and much more sophisticated. Indeed, on the other side of the country, in San Diego, we visited startup company Organovo. They're planning to take bioprinting to market. Very impressive looking labs. Brand yeah. new. Brand new. Been here for about three weeks. This is where the action happens. These are our tissue culture hoods. It keeps everything sterile. And we take the cells and build the 3D tissues within this space. So it's kind of an organ growing lab in a way. It is, absolutely. This sophisticated robot is the bioprinter. It squeezes out half a millimeter wide cylinders of bio ink. The inks just clusters of human cells, remarkably holding themselves together in the correct shape, just with natural adhesion. Six cylinders of cells are laid on each other to make a tubular blood vessel. In this cross-sectional diagram, the red circles represent the walls of the vessel. This is a fully human blood vessel that we've created with the bioprinter uh, here on the plate. And so you can see its three-dimensionality um, just as you turn the plate yeah, at a slight yeah, angle. Yeah. Again, the cells have assumed their correct positions in the vessel by themselves. There's no scaffolding holding this together. So how do the cells know where to go? They're smarter than we are in a lot of ways. It's their inherent properties. I think it's, uh, you know, it's leveraging the qualities that cells naturally have, which is to stick to each other. We are able to control the shape in which they do that, and then the printer builds the ultimate structure. The next step is to give the cells nutrients and then put them in the incubator overnight. 
There, they'll continue to self-arrange and form a vessel. After a night in the incubator and with a bit of cleaning, this is what you get. A replacement blood vessel made out of your cells. This blood vessel is the width of a few human hairs. Back in North Carolina, they're developing another application for bioprinting, for wounds. One of the strategies is to have a printing machine that not only prints, but also scans. So basically the patient is first scanned. So the wound area gets a scan of the wound and then we're able to go back with the printer and print the right layers of tissues right where they belong. Now, for most organs, there's still a long way to go before they'll be ready for patients. But research is progressing on artificial kidneys, heart valves, large blood vessels, and skin. Here it's being slowly stretched out. They're even working on artificial ears and fingers. Of course, fingers is still a long time away of us actually getting that into a patient. Uh, but the ear is simpler than a digit, and we're creating ears in the project we're doing right now with the military to provide these kinds of structures to our uh, injured warriors. Even muscles are up for replacement. To create artificial muscle, we use the same strategies as we have used with other tissues, but we also exercise them. We put them in these small bioreactors, these exercise machines, that actually stretch and compress the muscle structures so they build up strength over time before we implant them. But the organs most in demand are kidneys and livers. And Anthony's team recently had a breakthrough. They developed miniature livers that functioned like human ones, in the lab at least. But artificial liver and kidney transplants are some way off because they're so complicated. The kidneys have a very complex structure because it's a solid organ. And so unlike other structures like flat structures such as skin, which are the simplest, tubular structures like blood vessels or urethras, which are a second level of complexity, or even the bladders, which are a third level of complexity, the kidneys are a solid organ and have a fourth level of complexity. And therefore you have a lot more cell types so it requires much more sophisticated methods for engineering. Still, Fixing up livers and kidneys may be closer than you think. We may be able to patch them. If you take chronic kidney disease, for example, by the time a patient shows up at the doctor to say that I don't feel well, they are usually down to less than 10% of the function of that organ. That says you don't need the whole organ to be replaced to feel well. The tissue that is required to replace is actually only 10 to 20% to change the way that patient feels, change their quality of life, and, and really uh, be effectively a cure for them. Predicting the timing for any research is always difficult, but it's clear some pretty exciting developments are on their way. There'll be so many people, like Luke, who will benefit. So, uh, that is the status of uh, the organ printing or the bio printing where uh, people are able to uh, print a simple organs, right? So, then there is a long way to go to print a critical organs like a heart, liver, uh, uh, so we, we, we kidneys. So, we have to wait uh, for longer time to uh, see such kind of uh, uh, things uh, happening. So, so before closing uh, my presentation, so I would like to acknowledge a few people which uh, uh, say for uh, viral maxillofacial uh, uh, cases uh, uh, which we took uh, from uh, uh, the Shekhar Reddy and the Aditya Mohan from Panniya Dental College uh, that is at Hyderabad, um, uh, the TMJ and other stuff which the Manmadacharya has done with them. Uh, we would like to acknowledge them for providing uh, those cases and uh, uh, yeah, for then basically this is an interdisciplinary kind of uh, work. Uh, so you cannot do isolately and they cannot do isolately. So we would like to acknowledge these people and uh, as far as the dental uh, is concerned, so uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, Mahesh uh, who is the prosthodontic and implantology uh, department at Narana Dental College, Nellur. And I would like to acknowledge uh, the 
financial support given by the DST in terms of uh, um, uh, the Young Scientist uh, uh, Award uh, uh, that is from DST one and another one is SCRB under the scheme of EMR uh, for financial support for uh, these um, works uh, which I have presented here and uh, I would like to acknowledge my UG, PG and uh, PhD students uh, especially the PhD students means basically this is the work which I presented uh, is uh, three people uh, I, I would personally you know acknowledge uh, uh, first is Manmadachari he was my first uh, um, PhD scholar under me and uh, he did a lot of work and he he is the first person you know so actually uh, normally we, we we may not be going uh, you know every time and meeting the doctor and we have to thank him for his patience to get you know doctor's appointment so in spite of uh, their busy schedules and uh, he used to go to here to Hyderabad uh, and then uh, getting the appointment of uh, them so that is very tough so I would like to acknowledge uh, the Manmadachari uh, and uh, uh, the Santosh uh, he is my uh, JRF in fact actually in one of the projects uh, that is in EMR uh, scheme uh, I have appointed him as a JRF uh, and further I have converted uh, him as a PhD uh, enrollment uh, and uh, and majority of his work uh, he took from the cases from Chitra Madam but I didn't present any Chitra Madam case here uh, so um, yeah so I would like to acknowledge uh, the Santosh uh, uh, for his uh, no, uh, support uh, and uh, of course for the uh, the uh, cranioplasty uh, related work uh, the, I would like to acknowledge uh, Fani who is sitting there and anyway uh, very soon he is going to give a demo on the uh, uh, Rhinosaurus software uh, they will say how to model uh, uh, this, this the, the cranium you are going to explain same thing yeah okay so then he will import the skull and then he will show how this uh, he has done that modeling uh, uh, cranium implant and uh, a bit of analysis also you are going to if time permits yeah fine so maybe some other people are asking some uh, questions related to that uh, thing yeah you can even interact with him so yeah and uh, these are the three people so whatever I presented that is their work so just I am a supervisor or just you no know, so but th that is all credit goes to my PhD students so give them a big round of applause for uh, those three people uh, um, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. If you have some questions, I am ready to take, or otherwise, we will break for the tea. Um, yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, then we will uh, uh, break for the tea now. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. No, actually, uh, I don't know the commercial space, but those printers they made, uh, uh, yes, customized those printers. Ligaments? 